in class. Okay, so we um, we just took <coughs> get a bit the overview. I think uh, we had uh, the plan of the lectures is here. So we have now uh, we are almost reaching the the middle of the of the teaching. Uh, this week, the topic is gas dehydration using tech, triethylene glycol. We are going to have today the theory. We are going to have an exercise in class using EXO. And then tomorrow we are going to have an exercise with HISIS. Okay. Then the next uh, month will be uh, Harald uh, Ashheim. He will be teaching about uh, some fundamentals that you need on pressure drop, on heat exchanger, on um, uh, nose on compression. Okay, and Mariana, she will come back for pumping just after the heat transfer class. Okay, so, but for now, we are in this, this part here. So, the plan for today is uh, first get to some theory about dehydration. How do we make it on a platform? It's typically made with what we call an absorption column, and it's usually made with triethylene glycol. Okay. And uh, we are going to have a class exercise. But before we um, before we start, there are a few things. This week we are going to have the first meeting with the reference group, which is uh, Susan and Trikve. And uh, we just want, if you have any comments about the classes, the teaching, exercise, the support, just convey all of that to, to Trikve and Susan. And they will have a discussion with me and we take action if there is something to be improved that you know how to improve it in the future the meeting what did we agree was it tomorrow yeah tomorrow after after class okay so you can write him a, an email you can come him d during the break send him a message whatever okay yes so b first before we start has any of you seen this before using a absorption column or any distillation process? Is any of, any of you has a background in chemical engineering? No? Okay. <clears throat> so, the basic principle, right, it's, um, it's similar, we are going to start with some, it's similar to, we haven't covered yet heat exchanger, okay? But, okay? Similar to a heat exchanger that we in which we have a cold uh, stream, okay, we have here a cold stream that we want to heat. Then we have our heat exchanger, and here we have our very hot stream. We're going to see that in detail later, but uh, so that that we have the the hot stream out, and that is the cold stream out. Okay, which won't be too cold anymore, but will be hotter, and this won't be hot anymore, but will be actually colder. Okay. But the idea is that you exchange heat, okay? You, during all of this cross flow, if you see, if you are going to plot the temperature, right? Let's plot the temperature along X. So we have the very hot stream, the temperature will simply go down, okay? So that will be the hot stream or the heating stream. Maybe we can call it the heating stream. Okay, and heating stream out, and the other we will call it um, cooling stream in and cooling stream out. Okay. 
Okay, and this will be cooling. Here's what that we refer to the function and not to the not to the temperature. Okay, because it might be here that is not hot anymore, but it's actually a bit colder. So let's call it cooling stream outlet and this cooling stream inlet. Okay, so the 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 heating stream okay actually <coughs> it actually goes on this direction, right? So it goes from a T in all the way to T out. While the cold stream, okay, or the cooling stream comes from here is the lowest okay that's for t in and then it goes all the way up actually heating up and here you have t out and here we have the stream cooling stream okay you're going to cover that in detail um, uh, later okay we, when harald is teaching but essentially you send both in in separate directions the idea is that you will always have a heat transfer between the hot the heating stream and the cooling stream right but by doing that by sending them in opposite directions okay then you have that you try to keep the delta t which actually is driving the heat exchange you try to keep the delta t more or less constant okay if you send it the two at the same time the two from the same inlet, okay, in the same direction, they will have initially a very big delta T, right? But then it starts to become smaller and smaller, and the heat transfer starts to be not so efficient, okay? Like if we compare this versus using something like that, okay, where we have here again the heating that's versus okay. heating stream and cooling stream okay so if we see initially let's plot again the temperature versus the distance okay initially we have a very high temperature T in and we have a very low temperature for the cooling stream. Okay, and when you start heating, then this one starts to go up, and this one will start to go down, and this will be simply T out and T out. Okay, that's the heating stream, and that's the cooling stream. Okay. So you see initially what's driving the heat transfer, initially the heat transfer if we see like is the difference between these two temperatures. Initially it's going to be very big, but later it's going to become just simply smaller and smaller, making the heat transfer not very efficient. Okay, so that's what we are trying to make by using the first the first setup. Okay? So intuitively that's what we try to make in the in a tech column. Okay, so gas dehydration we know it has some water right we have to remove that water and we came to the conclusion that <clears throat> we have to cause that that water will come out of solution right somehow because it's it's in the gas it's saturated in the gas it's in gaseous phase and we have to make it drop out of the water okay so in gas the main purpose is to remove Remember, if we go back to our, just I want to bring back this image that we had, where are we? Okay. We are here, that gas that is coming here has a lot of water. Okay, if the pressure goes down, temperature goes down, that surely will happen in the export. This gas will go into the gas distribution system, that the temperature will go down, then the liquid will drop, this water will drop, and then it will cause a lot of issues. Okay, I think here we had one that had the specs. 
okay, minus 18, for example, water dew point, I want that to be, that means that the water, that the gas becomes saturated with water at minus 18 and 69 bar. That means that if I drop by any reason the temperature at minus, you know, 20, then I will start to have free water coming out of solution, right? So that's the whole purpose. We want to take out, here we have some water, but we want even to bring it down. And we don't want to do that simply by cooling the gas. Okay, we could do it, right? We could just bring the gas to minus 18, minus 20, and drop all the water in principle. Okay, but that requires a lot of cooling process. You have to cool it very, very low. Okay, so they use a more effective process and, and to cool, you need area, you need a heat exchanger, you need to lower, you need a source of low temperature. So, and that takes a lot of, of, of space. So a way to do it in a platform, which is very effective, takes lot spa little space, it's uh, to use a, a tech column. Okay, which is called uh, for gas dehydration. And that happens typically after separation and stabilization. And that is done before, before compression. And what we call wet gas transport. Okay, remember we had transport remember we had two transports in this drawing we had one that was wet gas pipeline uh, takes the gas from the platform to a center to an onshore gas plant and then that is preparing the stream to go to the customer okay to go through the gasco uh, network to send it to customers in britain in in germany whatever okay So we are now looking at, before that you have to remove the water. Okay. Uh, so it's called take columns are typically used. Okay. And how does a take column looks like? Well, first we have a column, okay, we have a structure which is like a vertical separator, simply a cylindrical unit. And I have at the bottom, I send the dry gas, the, the gas that comes from separation. Okay, that is the wet gas. And I have, I might place before either a cooler or I might place before a scrubber just to take the liquids out if there are any liquids such that it will be simply the gas which is saturated with water, okay, but simply, simply purely gas in vapor phase. And then I'm going to put here from the top, TEG, okay, this triethylene glyco. I'm going to introduce it from the top. And the idea behind is something like the heat exchanger, okay? There is a driving force that will be concentration. Take is a substance which is very hydro hydrophilic, okay, that tends to attract water. Um, so that's why we, we use it. Um, yep. <clears throat> and then we have, at the exit point, we have the dry gas. We have dry gas, let me bring it down. Okay, and at the end we have tech which is wet tech. Okay, tech that has water inside. And the idea is something, this one has not much water or it doesn't have any water at all, or very low contents of water. And this also has very low contents of water. So you need all the strength of the tech to pull that water out of the gas, okay? When you reach this point, you have a lot of water, okay? And this tech already has some water, so it doesn't take much effort to take that water out of the gas, 
okay it's like the driving force you're trying to keep it constant by using that process okay initially no water very little water so you the tech just wants to get as much water as it can and here there is a lot of water in the gas the tech already is feeling satisfied but still can say well i can take some of that water because there is just too much okay so that's in a very simplistic way that's that's the way we we do it and then we have here you have a series of processes that you have something called make region take regeneration I'm going to show you a figure later how it looks like okay well we have a box basically where we have simply water vapor okay simply we managed to and that's done by this is a, a um, at pressure simply atmospheric okay and temperature very high temperature so I boil this tank I tried managed to vaporize all the water so the water is removed here I have now again what we call lean tank okay or lean a tank that has very little amount of water and then I just simply send it back to the column so it's not that I throw the mega away, this that it has water, I throw it away because it is expensive. Okay? If you remember the calculation we made last week, it's, it's expensive. If I throw it every time away, that is a big expense. Okay? We are going to see now some numbers. But um, okay, I think for for last week I think we had something like eighty thousand liters, I think, of so that represents if I just cannot throw it away. I have to regenerate, which means heating, and then having lean tech, and then I come back. And of course, I have here to have sometimes make up tech. Okay? Because some tech, little bit of tech will come will come out with the water vapor. Okay, some of the tech will vaporize. <clears throat> so that's why I have to make up for because always I have to have the same amount. So I have to make up tech with some 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 of that. This system, okay, is typically something between the pressure might be something between 50, maybe 80 bar. But the temperature sometimes can be between maybe 20 and maybe 50 degrees Celsius. Okay? For that system so you already know that to make these two one low pressure system one high pressure system what do i have to make i have to put a valve right here to drop the pressure from these two are in contact here okay i have no thing separating them the both of them are in contact the gas and the liquid so the liquid that comes out here is that that pressure 69 to be able to introduce it here, I have to drop the pressure. All of this equipment is made for one bar, so I cannot expose it to 80. Okay? And then when I want to inject it back on this process, which has 80, I have to put a pump. Okay? Just to make it a bit more realistic. Okay? Just make sure that the... And I also have to put some coolers so that the temperature... You know, I don't send this to 200, but I put a cooler. But let's keep it more simple for now. Okay. So what is happening inside the column? Now we are going to focus exactly what is happening here. We are not we are going to look at the regeneration later today. Okay, what is happening in a very simple way. But for now our main focus is to see what happens in the column. And to understand what happens, before showing you how it's actually inside. I just want to make a very simplistic approximation process. Okay, so we have one stream, okay, that I'm going to call that L means uh, liquid molar rate, molar rate, and G means gas molar rate. X means the molar fraction 
of water of water in the liquid stream and y is the molar fraction of water in the vapor stream okay just like what we did on separation we have x which is a molar fraction of that component in this case water that's what we are focusing on in the liquid stream and y is a molar fraction of the same component in the vapor stream okay but just like exactly the same nomenclature we have used in separation okay so we have if we see here we have our column let's say that's the in inlet to the column or the top of the column column top okay. we have an inlet of LO which is you will see now why we call it um, or zero okay L zero but that's some tag okay that's mainly tag okay. and we have some XO X zero which means that tag comes with some water from the regeneration process it might be with a little bit of water okay this take with a little bit a little bit okay that's why I say XO that's the mole the mole fraction of water in that stream okay. now what comes out of the column top out of the column top comes the gas okay that I'm going to call G and that will be G1 you will see very soon why I use that nomenclature and Y1 which means the mole fraction of water in that stream okay now the way the column works is like if it was a collection of separators let me make it okay that's the approximation we make and that's actually very close to how the column works okay we have a separator okay where we have simply liquid a liquid phase and a vapor phase we take the vapor out for the next for the top okay and we take the vapor from down and the liquid we take it down so that's what we call a stage okay or that's what we call also a tray okay like a tray when you carry your food okay that's what we call a tray actually we have we have to mix the liquid stream coming from above the gas stream coming from below and then we take the liquid stream from the separator that these are already in equilibrium one down and one up okay so we can say here, okay, and this is G2, Y2, tray 1, that will be tray 1, and this will be L1, X1, okay? So, L, the, the, um, let me put here a small sequence, okay? What happens in a tray? What happens in a tray okay the column has different a lot of trays okay what happens in a tray first in tray let's not in a tray but let's call it in tray one okay we're looking at the first tray l0 and g2 are mixed okay they are joined together in a vessel and they are mixed okay then the equilibrium rates G1 and L1 are extracted. Okay, G1 is sent is sent up. Okay, and then L1 is sent down.
okay so i take coming above coming from below mixing and then i take whatever i find the equilibrium i send it up and down okay the liquid goes down and the gas goes up and here be careful okay g1 and l1 are in equilibrium That means that K1, Y1, X1. These two are in equilibrium. The one after the mixing, the one dropping down and the one going up, these are in equilibrium, thermodynamic equilibrium. Okay, or at least we assume. Okay, that's the first tray. What happens now with the second tray? Okay, the second tray, we make exactly the same. We take out this liquid, we mix it, mix it with some gas coming from below okay, that we're going to call G3. We drain the gas up and the liquid take it down to the next tray. So that will be L2 and X2. And this is tray number two. Okay. Okay, so we have now you see why we have the 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 nomenclature on the on okay. We have if it's one, right, that means that that's leaving a stage one. Okay, I'm going to stage two. Now I have two, also the same thing. It's leaving stage tray two to go to three. Okay, now this one is leaving three to go to two. And this one is leaving two to go to one. And here I have this one is leaving one, simply to go out of the column. Okay, and of course here I have one which is you know, I didn't have any tray. That's not coming from any tray. So I use zero, simply the, the, the index zero. Okay. Now I can repeat that process many, many times. Okay, as many stages as I want. I maybe four, maybe seven, maybe have as many stages as I want. Okay, but the thing that is important to, to remember, these two are in equilibrium. And these two are not. Okay, that's those are the ones that I'm mixing. I'm achieving equilibrium, and then okay, let's go to the last stage, okay, to the last tray. What do I have for the last tray? Last tray N. Okay, let's call it is number N. So here I have I have one L coming from N minus one, right? With X N minus one from the previous stage. Okay. I have one leaving, which is L N X N. Okay. And that's actually the one that goes to regeneration. Okay. This one goes that column bottom. And that's going to regeneration. Okay. I have gas coming in, which will be okay, the gas leaving up, that gas was G N, right? And Y N. Because it's leaving that stage. Okay? So the gas that is coming into that stage. That gas that comes from separation, okay, that gas actually have to call it G N plus one and Y N plus one. Because it goes from the stage with there is no stage, okay, there is something something below. Okay, that, that is the, the from separation process. Okay. 
Now, the way it works, that that's the schematics, okay? So you imagine what's happening in, in every trade. I come with two, mixing, and then equilibrium. Coming to mixing, equilibrium, okay? And that repeats maybe four or seven times, uh, and that's the way you have to think about it. Now, the way it is made is, let's see if I can make it, um, okay? So let's put first the top of the column. Okay, I have an exit here for the gas. I have an entry here for the tag. So that's a dry gas. That's a tag. Okay, and I have some sort of a, of a passage. And then I have my tray. So that's my tray. Okay, so the liquid, the tech, let's make it in color green. Okay, tech will be green. Well, maybe let's put it other color because green is usually oil. Okay, so tech is dripping through here. Okay, then it fills some volume, some level of tech. Okay, and here, this is actually controlling the level that you want, okay? When it starts to go up, when you have too much tech, then it simply starts to overflow, okay? And it starts to go, come down here. Okay, and here, the story is repeated. I have, again, a tray. Yeah, I'm not going to make the other, but the story is repeated, okay? You have sliding down the tech with that pipe, and then you have another tray and the gas. So what's happening with the gas? The tech is going on this direction. Let's use another color. Okay, let's use blue. Okay, it's going on this direction. And the gas is going up through that direction. Okay. Therefore, the gas is going through it, passing through that cup, okay? and then it's mixing with this tag, it's maximum exposure of that tag, and then it's flowing up. And that's the way I achieve that in that separation. That's, that's what is achieving this mixing okay, of these two guys. I have one coming down, one coming up. I have to mix it to be in equilibrium, and then I can take go one going up, and the other going down okay so that's how I achieve that mixing okay with those cups and I think I have a figure now to see how okay you have dry gas or gas coming up goes through this through these cups okay then passes through the tech then goes up to the next tray Okay, so let me copy that figure so you have it. Okay, and this is what we are actually saying that this is our separator. Okay, let me see which color do I use. Maybe this one. This guy is our separation stage. Okay, this we are saying is more or less similar to this guy, where we have two streams, one coming down, one coming up, one coming down, and one coming up. Okay? But it's not actually a separator, it's, uh, it's built in a different way. 
okay so actually which ones are here in equilibrium in thermodynamic equilibrium the gas coming out right and this liquid coming down these are in equilibrium which are the ones that are not in equilibrium this gas coming up and this liquid coming down okay so if i'm going to make i'm going to make just a star so this stream here let's say that's one star that is here okay i have this gas here that will be two stars that gas will be here okay. then i have the gas coming from the bottom that will be three stars that will be here okay and then i have this liquid coming from the side which will be four stars okay the way you think uh, is is you know you you have to you have to think um, but if you want to to model it you want to visualize it is very helpful to visualize like a separate okay now let's make a few things to model what's happening in this column okay let's make one thing a few things so well, let's make mass balance on the complete column okay then we're going to make a balance on the stage and then finally we're going to make a balance on a very a bit of a strange um, a bit of a strange system okay so let's make how do we make mass balance in the complete column we have L0 X0 then we have G1 Y1 then coming in here we had um, G n plus 1 y n plus 1 and coming out here we had l uh, n x n that correct yeah i think it's correct okay mass balance let's say of water okay on the complete column so if I make a balance on all of this volume, okay, what expression do I get? What is the water coming in? Water coming in is G n plus 1 times the volume fraction of water of that stream, right? What else is coming in? L O L 0 X 0, okay? And that's all the water coming in. Our water coming in from the gas, from the wet gas, and water coming in, there is a little bit on the tech. Okay. And what is the water coming out? Water coming out is G1 times Y1 plus the dry gas that still has some water plus LN XN. Okay, so let's let's look at that equation. What do we typically have in this equation? What do we have as an input? We are designing this tower, okay? What do we have as an input? We know how much gas, right, we want to dry. We know what is the water content of that gas, okay, that we can calculate. You actually, you got, you got uh, the way to calculate last week, gas, water content in gas, right? then you know this one is going to be very low if your regeneration process okay this one is very low okay you almost have no no water in that how much is the molar rate of of uh, gas coming out of the column here i have a molar rate right which is including gas and water and now when I come here, I will have removed a bit of the of the water. Okay? That means G 
G1. Okay, G1 is usually smaller than Gn plus 1. Right? Because I have taken out some of the some of the water, okay? Because water has been removed. Okay. However, the amount of water is so small that well, one can say that G1 is approximately Gn plus 1. Because it's so, so small that we simply say, well, the amount of water that you took out really doesn't change much G1. Okay? Therefore, we have that guy. Okay? Do we have Y1? Is a mole fraction coming out of the dehydrator. That's something that we desire, right? That's something that we say, well, we want to have certain water content. In our case, when you came here, we said we want it to condensate only when you reach minus 18, very low temperature. Okay, So that we're going to see on the exercise, but that typically we have, which is, which is desired, desired water content. And then finally we have these three, okay? We have these three things that we have no idea. The amount of tech that I'm injecting and also the amount of water that will be left in the tech. Okay? So let's make that L0, LN, and x n are unknowns okay we can often make the approximation that's what we're going to make in class we can often make that l0 is more or less similar to ln okay similar to what we have done on the gas we say well yes water it will join the tech Therefore, LN is bigger than L0, okay? Let's make put that here. LN will be bigger because water, it attracts water. However, We can often make that they are similar, okay? And this is equal to L. Okay, so what is the intention? That means that if you say how many, what is the rate of tech you're going to use? You're going to have some amount of water in the in the stream, okay? If you if you define how much water you want to have in this stream, then you have you are going to calculate the amount of tech that you want to inject. Okay? So I can have two calculation modes. I can use the equation in two ways. Okay? One of them is provide the first one is provide L calculate x0. Or Xn, sorry, which is the amount, the mole fraction of water in the tech leaving the, the, the contactor, okay, leaving the column. Or the other approach is to provide Xn and calculate L. Okay? That means you say, I cannot regenerate more than this percentage, therefore, this gives me how much do I have to use? How much tech do I have to use? The one we are going to use here in class will be this one, okay, the first one, to be used in class. 
Ok. I think we are, it's time for a break. Ok, let's say 50 minutes and we come back with the rest. So we come back here uh, 120. Ok, so far what we have done is um, we came, I show you very simplistic, in a very simplistic way, how the column looks like. Okay, what kind of temperatures, pressures we use. Then I show you this way, which is like a mechanistic understanding of the column. Okay, you can see that there has a lot of trays, and each tray is like a separation stage. Then I show you how it looks like in real life. And then now we are making mass balance of the water on the whole column. Okay, we came to that equation. Now we are going to make the mass balance of a tray I, of a tray I. And the tray I has, what is it coming inside the tray? It's, um, we have L from the tray above, which will be I minus 1 and X I minus 1 okay. and we have this gas coming from the tray Y I gas coming from the tray below which is plus 1 and then liquid going to the tray below which is L I X I okay. And if we make the mass balance on the water, we do the, fo the, the same logic. We say um, this is tray I. Okay, then we say GI YI plus LI XI. Okay, the balance on the on the tray. Okay, remember that's the total. Okay, this total includes water and tech. Okay, and this is also the total. This one involves gas, and then involves also water. Okay, this is the mole frac. Is the mole molar flow of everything of water and tech coming down and the other is water and gas coming up okay that's just we are not going to use that equation much it's just for you to have it on your notes okay it's important to know how to make the balance on a tray but now the next step we are going to make is something a bit strange okay but the way we are going to make it is we're going to take all the way from the top of the column we're going to have here, remember that was G1, Y1. This was L0, X0. And then you have here a series of trays. Okay, that will be one, two, three, and so forth. We're going to make a balance. We're going to make a balance on a tray I. Okay, but we're going to say, we're going to take from the top all the way to that tray I. That's going to be our control volume. Okay. Instead of looking at one tray, instead of looking at, at any tray, we're going to look at from the top all the way to a tray I. Okay, and you are going to see now very, 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 uh, you're going to see now why we are doing this. Okay, what is it coming out of the tray? It's coming L I X I, right? And coming to the tray is coming G I plus one and Y I plus one. Okay, correct. So then I make again mass balance or in reality is a mole balance, okay? Mole balance of water in the control volume. 
that means that whatever is coming out g1 y1 plus li xi should be the same that what's coming in l0 x0 plus gi plus 1 yi plus 1 okay and now comes why are we doing this actually what we want to find is these two guys right how these two guys are changing okay we want to find the x and the y for every we want to find x and y that's the objective we want to find xi and yi for each tray we want to see how they 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 behave from one tray to another okay so i'm going to take this equation let's call it equation 1 and i'm going to say clear y i plus 1 from equation 1 Okay, then I end up with y i plus 1, g1, And I end up with that equation. Okay, and simply rearranging terms. I think I made a mistake someplace. This should be minus and this should be plus. This should be minus and this should be plus. Right? Okay. So that's giving you, if you look at that, that's giving you the gas, the volume, the molar fraction of water coming into the tray in the gas okay has a function of so that's the molar fraction of water coming into the tray or entering the tray we can say simply entering the tray And this is in the gas, okay? And it makes it has a function of xi, and xi is the molar fraction of water leaving the tray, and that is in the liquid, okay? And almost everything else, you know, this is the one at the top, right? We already discussed that. This is also the one at the top. So we have that you managed to express these two that are entering and leaving the stage with that equation. Okay? But there is a small problem. We have this, the molar flow of gas entering into the stage and the molar flow of liquid leaving the stage. These two are things that we don't know also. Okay? But we can make, so that equation is called the operational line. Hmm? It's called the operational equation of the column. The, this equation here. Why? Because we have the conditions at the top, and if we find the rates, we can really find exactly what is happening um in every in every stage
Okay, I can make an assumption. Okay, that g i plus one will be very similar to g one. That means that I just can make that is a common g. Okay, because the amount of water that the gas is leaving, that the gas is dropping, is not very significant. Okay, so I can say that the molar flow simply remains constant through the column. Okay, just to be able to solve it. And another assumption I'm going to make, assumption one, and assumption two, we say that Li is very similar to L0, which will be very similar to L. We also say that the tech molar flow is going to take some water, but that water is not going to be enough to change very much the molar flow. Okay, this is usually a reasonable assumption this is not uh, not so good. Okay? Good assumption. Because when water, by the end of the tray, this L simply has a lot of water. Okay? So then you cannot make the assumption that the molar flow is constant. But let's just be aware of that and, and let's continue with, with that assumption. Okay? So if you do that, you end up with the following equation the operational line of the column. Okay, will be I plus one. Simply, these two L's are the same, so I can take it as a common factor. XO minus XI plus Y1. Okay, simply I took L as a common factor, I divide by G, and then these two guys, they give me 1, and finally I end up with that equation. Okay. Now there is something interesting, okay, if I make a plot now, I'm going to plot Y versus X. Okay, I'm going to plot this equation at x0, okay, I'm going to be with y1, okay, s0 is what is coming into the first tray, okay, and y1 is what is leaving the first tray, okay, so that's the tray, the first tray, this combination is, let's make it like that, tray 1, okay, what happens now if I increase x? In all the other trays, right, the water molar fraction will be increasing on the tech. Right? Simply you will have more and more water together with the tech. Okay? Therefore, what is this equation? It's a straight line. Okay, it goes someplace like that. Somewhere like that. All the way to the last tray which is xn and what value should it mark here xn is what's coming from the last tray okay and then the gas coming into the first tray is yn plus 1 okay Okay, so now we see why why are we going to use this um, this this um, wh why are we going to use this um, this curve? Okay, this line. But we also know, right? We also know that the column is at constant pressure, right, and constant temperature. We also know that, right? And if you remember, what have we used to make Rashford rise? You remember what was the input we used when doing Rashford rise? What can we calculate with P and, and T? Some Something called the K factor, right? The K factor of component I 
Okay, in this case, I means component, not tray. Okay, that that we said is simply y i divided by x i. Okay, the molar fraction of that component in the gas divided by the molar fraction of that component in the liquid. Okay, and if you remember, what was the plot that we made for that k was relatively constant. That was with pressure in log scale. That was with k also in log scale. Okay, and was relatively linear. Okay, for the region for low pressure at a constant T okay, and for low pressure. So our system for the water, okay, if we calculate K of H2O at that pressure and temperature, we know that Y of H2O and X of H2O is also going to be constant. Because we are at the same, always in the tower, we are roughly at the same pressure and temperature. Therefore, the K will be constant. Okay, the K of H2O in the tower is constant. That means that Y of H2O is simply K H2O times X H2O. And what does that give me here in this plot? Simply a line like that, right? And this is what we call, this is the equilibrium line. Okay, that simply is K times X. The, the K factor times the molar fraction of water in the tech. Okay, so now let's let's look one tray at a time. Okay, I think it's that we came by making mass balance on the taking from the top all the way to the bottom. So we can take really any tray. Okay, and this one we made simply by by saying that y i divided by x y always have a factor. They're always related by a factor. And if pressure and temperature don't change, that factor is constant. Okay, so let's look at the first tray. We have a tray here. Coming out of the tray is G1, Y1. Coming into the tray is X0, uh, L0. And coming out of the tray is L1, X1. Coming into the tray is G2, Y2. Which ones? We're in thermodynamic equilibrium, if you remember. These two are mixing, right? This guy and this guy are mixing. And then I'm taking two which are in thermodynamic equilibrium, right? Which are these two. Okay. So here in this plot, I have Y1. So where is going to be X1? It's in equilibrium, right? So I just have to move to the line of equilibrium. And here I will find X1. Okay. I have Y1, I have the K, and then I can calculate X1 with no problem. So that will be the liquid that is coming out of the first tray. Okay. How do I find now a, a Y2? Remember our equation, right? Y i plus 1 is equal to L G X 0 minus X i plus Y 1. Uh, yes. Okay. If I apply for tray 2, for tray 2, that means Y 2 will be equal to L X o minus X 1 plus Y 1. Yes? Okay. That means that I have to move now up to that line. So that will be here is tray 2. Now I'm not in equilibrium. I have used now the second equation to calculate y2. I'm moving on that on that line with x1 that I already have it. I use I 
I calculate it from here, x1. Now I have to move with that x1 all the way up to the operational line to find y2. Okay? And that's how I move, that's why I can move like that in my column. Okay, so I have these two lines, and each tray will be simply this, you know, horizontal line. Tray 2, this will be y2. Now I come here, this will be x2. Okay, now I come up here, that will be y3. And so forth. Okay. So, let's say I want to have, okay, I remember, all the point of this is to get this value, okay, low to the number that I, that I, um, that I need, right? So, you should have here. Yeah, let's uh, let's keep it let's keep it like that and let's make an exercise, okay? In the time we have left, okay? But the idea is that you can find the number of trays, and at some point you will have here your inlet, okay? Let's say it's here, okay? Y, yeah, actually it's here. Y n plus one, okay? That's your inlet, okay? This guy here is your inlet. Yeah. And you have always to choose a number of trays that gives you more higher than, than the inlet. Okay? You always should choose the number of trays that gives you higher than the inlet. But let, let's make, an, let's make a, an exercise in the time we have left. Okay? And the exercise is on the website. It's on uh, class files, I think. Gas dehydration with tech. And let's try to do it. You're going to get it as a home exercise, okay? So you can uh, think about it. We have gas rate that we want to dehydrate, 2.8 million. The gravity is 0.65. Pressure and temperature. They come just right from the separation, so it's 69 and 38. That's how much comes from the regeneration process. Okay, that XO is a molar fraction of water in the tech that comes from the regeneration. Molecular weight of water, concentration of tech, the density, molecular weight, okay? And then you see, that's the desired dew point. After I come out of the tower, after I come out of the column, I want it to be that we only water will come out of solution if I reach minus 10. Okay? So you can find out, you remember that this from last week, right? That's the water content in gas, this RSW. You can calculate at the inlet. So let's make a, a small scheme of our process. Okay, we have my column, that's class exercise. Okay, we have gas, we have uh, 2.83 million standard cubic meter per day. And we know it's saturated with, with water. Okay, and then we have a pressure of 68.95. And we have a temperature of 38. Okay. Then that comes into the column. The tag that we have here, we are not sure how much it is. Okay. But we said the XO will be 0 0.1. That means I was able to take out during the regeneration process a lot, but I still there is some water left. Okay, that's the water fraction in the tech. Water frac mole fraction in the tech. Okay. 
here I have at the exit I have gas okay I have this gas coming out okay. then I want to say the dew point should be minus 10 at the same pressure 68.95 bar that's what I want okay and we are asked to look at that problem and to try to define how many stages we we need okay for our process okay so let's do one thing first which is to determine our first step will be to determine water content in the inlet gas stream okay we want to determine how much water we have here in that stream entering the column how do we do that we need to calculate this rsw right at 68.95 bar and temperature of 38 degrees celsius for that we use either the chart that we covered last class or last week remember this chart okay we came with the temperature we come with the pressure or we can use the equation right that we have in bba so let's use the equation and that's the first step we have here rsw at the inlet and the equation is called rsw kilogram per million and that is taking pressure that is taking temperature what is g a specific gravity of the gas and then the salinity we don't have we say we don't have uh, we're going to assume there is no salt that means that that gas that is coming into the dehydrator into the contactor has a thousand and five kilogram per million standard cubic meter okay and that's the same as if I come into this chart with 30 38 and uh, how much was it 68 how much is 68,000 that should be someplace here Yeah, it will be like a thousand something. Okay. Now, what is the content I want? Okay, what is this content? I don't know, right? But I know that if I take it to 10 degrees, minus 10 degrees, it should condensate. Okay, it should be saturated at that temperature and pressure. Okay, if I go below that, it should condensate. So that means if I come here and I put to minus 10 and a pressure of 68 okay then I will know how much that gas can carry okay so let's do that RSW pressure is the same pressure because there is no hardly any pressure drop in the in the tech column temperature is also the same temperature doesn't change much g specific gravity no sorry the temperature has to be minus 10 okay has to be these conditions because i want to be saturated at minus 10 so i want to calculate how much for a gas that is at minus 10 and 68 how much water does it have okay and that's what I'm doing minus 10 68 the salinity will be 0 and the other gives me 61 that means according to this requirement I have to go down from a thousand kilogram per million to 61 kilogram per million okay total water to remove is simply the difference between this one 
and this one multiplied times um, the gas rate okay and that tells me that I have to remove 2,600 kilogram of water per day okay <clears throat> now to use my equations right I know I have to paint my operational line this line and I have to paint my equilibrium line okay and then I have to make this crazy uh, stage counting okay but let's try to make now this first line what do I need to make that line I need y1 I need uh, XO which I have and I need um, L and G okay so let's see the things that I need so that's the second step well actually the third okay determine desired water content in um, outlet gas stream is RSW at 68.95 and temperature of minus 10 and the RSW was how much? Sixty-one point eight. Okay, and here it was a thousand and five. Okay. Then I find out the third step, I find out uh, water to be removed. And that water was, water will be RSW at a Okay, multiplied by the rate of gas that I have and that was 2600 okay now the fourth step is I want to calculate the equilibrium line and for the equilibrium line that tells me that y i plus 1 is L over G X zero minus X I plus Y one. Okay, so I need I need L the molar flow rate of gas. I need the molar flow rate of teg. I need G. I need and I need Y one and X zero I have. Okay, this one I have from the re regeneration that one was given here point one okay so I have to calculate all of those should we do it tomorrow hmm? or you have head to you have do you have brain left to to continue a bit we we have to calculate these three, okay? This one we have, and then we can find this equation. We can just simply change x until you find y. Okay? So let's um, let's leave it for tomorrow, okay? So because I don't want to make it running today. And let's just make now, in the time we have left, just a very simple uh, sum up. Dehydration, we make it basically like a heat exchanger that both streams go in the opposite directions. Okay, the idea is that you have the delta T is constant, therefore the heat transfer is constant. We do exactly the same on a column. Okay, we send 
the 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 stream which is likes has very little content in water and likes to get water against the 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 stream that has a little bit of water but so so the tech has is hungry for that water that is in that gas and at the beginning of the column we have the gas which is very has a lot of water okay it's very wet and then we have the tech which also has a lot of water but still you know this one has so much water that it can steal a little bit from it it's very easy to steal take from the water okay the way we model it like a multi-stage separation at constant pressure and temperature this is made at constant pressure and temperature okay crumb from top bottom mix and calculate come from top bottom mix calculate okay these two are in thermodynamic equilibrium these two are the k values are applied for these two 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 guys okay then we saw how it looks like in real life then we made to make calculate an equation to see how x and y are related in every stage we have made mass balance and taking from the top a control volume from the top okay and then we end up with this equation which is the operational equation of the column we know that every yi that is entering into the tray and every xi leaving the tray they fulfill that equation simply by mass balance then we made one assumption saying the molar flow rate of gas doesn't change much is constant and the molar flow rate of liquid is also constant doesn't change much is the same for all trays and then finally we end up with this equation which is very powerful okay it tells you you can find really how every tray the liquid leaving the tray and the gas entering the tray the relationship between these two that's very powerful they, you know they're going to fall exactly on that line but you also know something else the liquid leaving the tray and the gas leaving the tray they also have to fulfill this condition the k factor because they are in equilibrium they are they were in a separator and they are now being drained okay and we know that because pressure and temperature don't change then the k won't change as well therefore the equilibrium line is simply this red line here okay and then we go tray by tray we say that's the liquid leaving the tray that's the gas entering the tray but now i can find the gas the liquid um now i can find uh, sorry that's the gas leaving the tray i can find the gas the liquid leaving the tray okay with the equilibrium line i know now that the gas leaving the tray the liquid leaving the tray has also a gas which is leaving the tray entering the tray that should follow on this operational line okay and i proceed like that for every for every tray and we started to make uh, an exercise the first thing we made was to calculate the water content that we have the water content that we want we calculate how much uh, water has to be removed and now we are just in the in the step to calculate this equilibrium line okay i think that's all we have time for today any question before we close many questions okay see you tomorrow